Hey guys, this is Amy Reader. Um, today I'm making a video perspective t post. Um, for those of you who don't know, I've been doing some perspective posts on Tumblr, so I'll post a link to that. But, um, but yeah, so today I felt like I really needed to do something by video because I'm mostly talking about not the how-tos, but the when-tos, like, like trying to figure out when to use certain perspectives um, in storytelling to, to tell a better story rather than telling you how. But I'm getting to more complicated angles um, and I use perspective grids on <clears throat> I use perspective grids on the computer. So um, and, and I feel like there's a lot of really interesting things that you can do. So I feel like it's worthwhile for me to show you guys. Um, usually w whenever I have two point perspective or three point perspective, I start with this um, sorry, this two point perspective grid right here. Um, that I've set up for myself where there's a closer point and then one way far off point that doesn't exist on my actual grid. Um, and then I also have these vertical lines that are parallel. Um, and I basically use transform tools to and move it around and create whatever kind of perspective I want. Um, so anyway, so yeah, I've got like, you know, I copy this layer several times and do some fun stuff with it. I also have a one-point perspective grid, but I'm not showing that here. Um, so yeah, this is a page, and I've scanned in um, the thumbnails to a page, and um, after I've scanned in the thumbnails, I'll draw um, panel lines right here, so you can see what it looks like when it's on its own. Um, and they, those help me cut out the grid a little bit, so that's why I draw those in. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm going to just basically show you guys how I would do the perspective on this top layer. So, um, I usually go to edit and then free transform because that's just like, that, that makes it so you can rotate it and, um, change the scale. So, it's really useful for this. Um, so yeah, I'm going to rotate this so that the parallel lines that used to be vertical lines are now going to be aligned with the, the tops of these buildings here. So I'm just trying to put it at the right angle at the start. And then I'm going to move that closest point that's down here, I'm going to move this, you know, towards where all these buildings are leading as they go off into the distance. Um, and then as you can see, the grid is not wide enough at this point. So I'm going to take this over here and I'm going to move it and make it wider and of course that changes where this point is so I'm going to scooch it back over here there's a lot of like adjusting that I do um, and when I do this I do a lot of checking like I try and really look at my drawing and see whether the grid matches it I mean you can also just kind of try your best and then and then change the picture around for your grid especially if you're not all that good at perspective sometimes the grid can help you but in general, I try to make the grid work for me, not the other way around. So yeah, I'm trying to make sure that all of these lines that are splaying out are going to um, go along with what I'm doing. And it looks like um, the ones coming from the shortest point are pretty close, but, um, but let's see. I want them to be, yeah, let's see. So they're pretty close. But the lines that are coming, that are supposed to be the ver now vertical lines, um, they are just a little bit too tilty here because I want, this is the main character here, and I kind of want her to be standing straight up. So um, what I'm going to do now, I've mostly just widened this, and that kind of makes it feel like the perspective is more extreme. Um, to make the perspective less extreme, you got to move the two perspective points away from each other or just basically elongate that end of the perspective grid. And so that kind of makes it look more like she's straight up now, like that those lines now kind of match up a little bit better. And I'm just going to look around here and check to make sure that everything matches and I think it looks pretty good. As you can see, it doesn't always have to go right off to the edge. You can kind of eyeball things um, and use some of these lines over here to to finish off where uh, where some of the lines are going to go. And then after that, I go to the layer where the panel lines were, 
and I select the area of the panel that I did the grid for and I go back to the grid, um, select inverse and I cut out the excess. So that's how I do that. Um, and I'll do one more for you. Alright, and here we have um, a new panel. We're going to do this top panel here. So it's an aerial view of a party. I don't know if you can see it. It's not very well um, you know, delineated, but these are just a bunch of heads. Um, and as you can see, there's not a lot of lines that I need to line up with. Uh, the only thing is like that there's this sign up here um, that kind of suggests a perspective, but mostly I need the grid so that I can draw everybody in perspective and have it look right. Um, it's really helpful so that I can visualize what I'm doing. Um, so here's the panel lines and here's the grid. Um, we'll do edit transform again. Free transform. Um, and we want to put the point down here below the picture. The reason why is because this guy, we can see his body, so we can't have the point right on him or you know, then we won't see his body as clearly as we do here. I mean, he's kind of leaning back, but yeah. Um, and it looks like everything's kind of leading to this point um, a little bit, or at least in my mind, that's how I vis visualized it. Um, and this is Eve, the main character, so I kind of want to make sure that the vertical lines are all kind of still leading to her. I think I want to tilt this more, though. Have it be like this. Uh, yeah, I'm still worried about making sure that that sign meets. Do a little bit of this and a little more tilting. Yeah, that see that looks a lot better. Um, and then kind of let's see, do a little bit more like this. And yeah, every time that you make an adjustment, it can really change things up. So it can take some time, especially when you're new to it like trying to find the right perspective grid. Um, and you don't want to get it wrong because then you got to go back and do it later on. By the way, I use these, I, I light box over these, so that's why I'm doing a grid. Um, and then I can always refer to the image underneath what I'm doing the final drawing on because it's got that grid there. It's really useful. Um, I think I'm going to make this even lower this point, this closest point. Um, and yeah, that looks kind of right. I'm going to have people kind of angled at this way when they're standing over here and, and, and it kind of like leads people from the top right to the bottom left and then they go here and here. So I'm kind of like thinking about where it's going to lead people's eyes. Um, and I think that's good. So I'll click the check mark and then I'll go to the layer where the panel layouts are and go back to the grid, select inverse and cut out the rest. So there it goes. And this is um, the final of what those grids look like, like when I finished all the grids. This is my one point perspective and this is another two point perspective zoomed in. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and hopefully that clears things up a little bit. Um, and helps you kind of realize where the possibilities are. One thing that I didn't really find it some good examples for yet um, are that sometimes like your perspective can be off in this corner like like there's in the nether regions of this grid you can find some really interesting angles so even if it really feels like this grid can't be applied it probably can it's just all about like enlarging certain areas and keep adjusting until you can get the right lines pointing the right ways. Anyway, thank you for watching. Bye.